so um, in this video, uh, this, is, this will be one of our lab videos. Okay, so hopefully at this point you've had an opportunity to look at the lecture videos and you know, look at the introduction to machine learning and look at the other uh, you know, topics that we've discussed. So in this topic, as you, as you know, this is a course machine learning for cybersecurity. So we will be um, focusing on a specific problem. All right, so we're gonna look at a problem um, and then we're gonna analyze it from the point of view of machine learning. How would we do machine learning on this problem? So uh, the, the particular problem in question here is IoT device detection. So IoT, as you might know, stands for the Internet of Things. And so we are talking about smart devices connected in the network. All right, so the learning objectives of this lab are basically to look at, you know, taking a problem, taking a problem, right, and creating the machine learning pipeline. Okay, so we're going to, that's really the objective. So we're going to take an open-ended problem. I'm going to talk about it. This is, you know, so I'm not, you know, I'm going to, we're gonna look at a lot of topics and implement them and we're gonna write a little bit of code, all right? So we're gonna take a, a machine, a problem, uh, a machine and convert it to the machine learning pipeline. So the learning objective here will be, okay, how do we go, go from the raw data, the raw data, so how do we go from the raw data to something that can be modeled with machine learning to achieve some objective? Okay, so those are the learning objectives of this. This is an IoT, IoT device, device detection. Okay, so IoT device detection. Remember IoT, if you haven't heard about it, stands for the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things. So the objective here is that we have, you know, so what is the problem? The problem is, so we can frame it here. The problem, right, is that, you know, we have a network. <clears throat> you know, you have a network in a company, uh, something. So you have a network, a network. And in this network, you have all the standard devices that you had in the past, servers, routers, and switches. But at the same time now, you have uh, smart devices. You know, smart devices from the Internet of Things are things that, you know, are connected to the network. They send data. You know, they do things. So, for instance, you have a camera. So, for instance, you have a camera. And this camera is now connected to the network via an IP address. So it's got, it's basically using the TCP IP, TCP IP protocols, right, for communication. And so therefore this camera is sending packets. So this camera is sending packets through the network. And actually you have, let's say we have five types of smart devices. So we have uh, camera, we have an assistant, so assistants are usually uh, things like Alexa. So we have assistants like Alexa, you know, Alexa, right? And then we have um, outlets, so we have like power outlets, you know, like power outlets, so these are you know, if you're traveling, go, you know, going on vacation or something, you want to turn on some lights on and off via the network. So this is a type of uh, device. You know, you can connect mobile devices, for instance, let's say, and some other ones. So let's say we have five. So we have miscellaneous, miscellaneous devices, right? So we have five smart devices. So that basically means, okay, that's kind of the environment that we have. We have a network. You know, your home, maybe you've connected these devices. All right, now that you've connected these devices, you decide, well, um, now let's imagine we scale this up to an enterprise environment, like a company. 
And in this company, the system administrators now, you know, because of security reasons, uh, they know that Internet of Things devices don't, aren't as robust, let's say, in the software development. So they may have uh, a few vulnerabilities, right? So they, might, they may be less secure. So they are, they're wondering, you know, what happens if somebody comes in and connects a smart device to the network, right? So they connect some smart device to the network. Is there any way that we could detect what type of a device this is? Could we detect it's a smart device, you know, an I, or an IoT device? And then in particular, not only that, but can we determine if it's a, an assistant, like an Alexa, a camera, a power outlet, some mobile devices, or other? Right? And so that's really the objective of this problem. So, the, so again, so then we have, now we start to think of the problem. Okay, this is what we want. So what do we know? That's how you frame a machine learning problem, right? So what, what do we know? So what do we know? All right, and usually, you know, when I, whenever I think of machine learning, whenever I'm trying to think of, you know, I need to answer some questions. So, for instance, am I going to do a supervised approach or unsupervised? Okay, that's one. How much data do I have? How much data... do I have? Right? What are the classes? Right? I want to know what the classes are. So what are the classes? What are the features? What are the features? Right? So these are the questions that I'm trying to answer. Right? And so all we know, as I said, you're a system administrator in a company. People, you know, you, you no longer just have the standard devices like servers and computers. Now you have smart devices. Okay, so how do I, um, you know, I, and people are connecting these devices. Could I write an algorithm that, you know, detects these devices? And if so, how do I do that? Right, so that's the question. So if you notice, you know, another way that's helpful of, of framing this is you might think of the pipeline. All right, so what's going to be my pipeline? I have, I need some data, all right? Then I need to, uh, you know, create a vector space, all right? Now you need to answer a question. Do I have labels? Right, so this is a question that you need to answer. If you do have labels, then you will take a supervised approach. If you don't have labels, you will take a unsupervised. And that will determine the type of machine learning that you're going to execute. All right, so you know this is kind of the pipeline that we need to determine. So the first thing that we should look at is, okay, we know what the problem is. Let's think of the data. What's the data going to look like? All right, so let's go and think of the data here. So for IoT, what will my data look like? IoT data, all right? So these are, as I said, this is the network, all right? So you have a, you know, let's say firewall, you have a router over here, you have a switch, switch two, let's say, you have switch three over here, and then switch one, over here, right? So your computers are being connected here. So somebody comes in, they connect an Alexa, for instance. Okay, and Alexa is connected. Here you have a camera. You have a camera over here, and so on, right? So you start thinking of these devices. So what is the data exactly? All right, so what will the data be here? Well, as it turns out, because these all have IP addresses, right, they're actually using TCP IP, TCP IP, right? Um, and so we're using this protocol. So we know this is, in fact, okay, well, it seems that we probably here have network data. 
network data. So that's really great because now we know what the data looks like. Okay, so what do we know about network data? Network data is usually PCAPs, PCAP files. So that means that we can capture the data with something like Wireshark or TCP dump or a lib PCAP if, if you want to write some code. All right, so we know this. So our data looks like this. Okay, network data. Now, now that we know this, we know that the source is network data, then you need to start thinking about, okay, so what, what kind of data do I have? All right, so this is our Y vector. This is our X matrix. All right, so you need to decide on several things. You need to decide what is a sample. That's the first thing that I'm going to have to think about. What is a sample? So what is a sample here? All right, that's the first criteria. That's going to de define, so if I write this over here, so I'm going to say sample one, sample two, sample three. What is a sample? The rows. Then you also need to ter determine what are the features? What is F1? What is F2? What is F3? And so on. What are these? And then also, what are the labels or the class? So these are the questions we need to answer. So we know it's network data. So let's look at, um, let's think of this criteria. So we may also have some packets that are UDP, IP. All right. We will also have an issue that some of the data, some of the TCP data, the payload of the data may be encrypted. So some of the data may be, you know, may use cryptography. So, you know, by def you know, in theory, if something is encrypted, it should, you know, according to Shannon, right, at least it should be very random. And so therefore, if it's random, you can't really find patterns so easily. So um, you need to make decisions. So this is where, when, when you start to frame your problem, you need to start making decisions about how you're going to do it. You know, what are you going to do? So since you're tackling this problem for the first time, the recommendation would probably be to keep it as simple as possible. And then later on, uh, explore other alternatives. So, you know, what I would recommend is, for instance, if you have TCP and UD packets, do TCP first. So do TCP and don't do UDP. So like skip all the UDP packets for now. So because you know machine learning, whenever you build machine learning algorithms, you actually want to make them specific to the problem. You want to make them as specific to the problem as possible. That's usually uh, the objective. To make them as specific to the problem as possible. All right, so we're going to just say, you know, all packets are TCP packets. Also, a packet, you know, if, if we look at a packet over here, right, so a network packet is made up of headers, right? So we have the Ethernet header, then we have the IP header, then we have, we're only looking at TCP packets, and then we have the payload. Now, each one of these will have fields. And in that sense, this is really, that makes it very easy for machine learning because the fields translate into the features. The features. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, so let's just say we're not going to look at Ethernet. Because of cryptography, we'll not, we're not going to look at payload. Um, and instead, we're just going to focus on these two fields, IP and TCP. So all of our features are going to come from that, okay? So that's one thing we know, all right? So now if we go back, okay, we've determined that these F1, F2, and F3, these features are going to be F1, F2, F3, and so on. They're going to be IP and TCP fields. So that's what that's going to be. So 
That's good. So there's roughly, between those two headers, there's roughly about 40 features that we could possibly look at. 40 features. So see there, now we've established something about our data. We know that this is probably less than 40. The number of columns is less than 40. So that's really great. Um, now we know how to get that data, but we still need to define what a sample is going to be, and we still need, need to define the classes that we have in place. So with regards to the samples, there are several approaches that we could take. All right, so for instance, whenever we have a network connection, you know, let's say that we have a network connection. All right, so we have a couple of devices here, A and B, let's say. And B is... Um, the camera that sends some information to a server. So this is a camera. All right, so now the question is, what is the sample? So obviously the packets are coming from the camera. That's really what we want to um, use. So we have a packet here, a little packet going in that direction. Okay, and so one every packet for instance so possible samples are samples could be every packet is a sample that's a possibility another possibility is that it could be a stream of packets all right so it could be a stream of packets all right, so what does that mean? It means that instead of grabbing, you know, imagine that, you know, some here you have a network tap and the network tap is tied to Wireshark. So Wireshark. So Wireshark is just going to collect every packet that goes there. So every time a packet goes by, so a packet goes by, Wireshark creates what is called a PCAP file. And so it's just a text file. So every packet that goes by is a, an entry. So it's a row. So PCAP, you know, packet one, got it. Packet two, got it. And so on, right? So it keeps doing that. And, and then basically here we define this as sample one, sample two. Now, something else that could happen is you say, well, I don't want to use every packet. Instead, I want to create a window a window of time. So I'm going to say every minute or every 30 seconds, so every a window of 30 seconds, from 0 to 30. So every, you know, at 1 minute and then in 1 minute and 30 seconds and then at 2 minutes and so on. So every 30 seconds, I'm going to start collect collecting packets. So now you say, okay, this is, you know, second zero all the way to second 30, right? So I'm gonna collect all the packets that arrive, packet one, packet two, packet three, packet four, and so on. So you collect all the packets, and then you define, well, I want this window of time, 30 seconds, to be my sample, not just every packet, but this one. So in that case, what you could do is you've collected all the data, all packets are the same in, in, the, in, in the sense of the fields. The values are different, but the fields are the same. So for instance, every packet will have a, you know, let's say a source port. All right, so every packet will have a source port. All right, and so um, in this case, let's say that the source port is like 1,000, you know, 4,000, 2,000, um, and 2,000, right? And so what's going to happen now is when you create your actual, you've co you're collecting data every 30 seconds, but when you convert this to the actual sample that you use, sample one, right, because this is sample one, you still just have one row. You're going to have one row, and now what you can do is, this is packet, you, you can think of this as average packet. So you can think of this as average packet right in that time window of 30 seconds so what you do is you still have a source port but the value for source port now will be 
the average of all of these. So the average of these. So it's going to be, what is this, 4? That's 9,000, right, divided by 4. And so it's going to be the average of source port right there. And that's what you collect. So now your packets are defined as windows of 30 seconds where you may, may have collected 1,000 packets or whatever. And then you need to represent for that sample one, that window of time of 30 seconds, you need to represent the average of all the values. So for you know, another example is you had like all fours and all twos, right? Then you know this would be the average of that. So again, it's all going to be the, the average values that you have in there. All right, so these are kind of the two approaches, as I said, so like stream or every packet. And of course, with machine learning, you can always get really creative and create other samples. But that's the key thing. So let me summarize here. So again, you need to define what the sample is. Okay, so sample. Sample. So do you want every packet, let's say per packet basis, per packet basis, or do you want this to be on a window of time, window of time basis? A window of time basis. So you need to make a choice. And as I said, the only difference is you still have the same features pretty much, except that here you have the features for each individual packet as a sample, whereas here you have for all the packets you received in a window of time of 30 seconds, you have the average of every feature. Okay? So that's the approach. You need to select one. So for this lab, I'm going to select the per packet basis, which is usually the easiest, requires the least amount of code. And so this one, obviously, it's a little bit more, more code to write, but it, in some situations, this one may be better. Okay. So now let's go back to our pipeline. So remember, in our pipeline, we have data. We need the data, right? Then we need to maybe clean the data, pre-process the data. Then we need to have the vector space model, right? So we need to have the vector space model. And then once we have that, we're going to do machine learning. And then we're going to do, oops, the evaluation. So in our case, for, for this lab, this will be a very straightforward lab. Uh, we are mainly concerned with this part in this lab. So this part we're still going to do, but we're going to do it with a, you know, our, our easiest approach. We're just going to use the Weka program. So by using Weka, that actually makes it just pretty straightforward with a GUI interface. So the key thing is our focus needs to be on these three uh, boxes, right? So that needs to be our focus. So currently, you know, we vote, we sort of have an idea of what the features are. So the features, are basically the fields in the TCP and IP headers. All right, so th that's what we have. We still don't know what cleanup we need. You know, we'll have to think about that. And then we have the data. So the data basically means we need to figure out, as I said, the X matrix and the Y label. All right, so we've already agreed that we want the samples to be packets. So that's settled, S1, S2, S3. Each packet that we capture, that's a um, sample. So that basically means that we know the size of N, right? Because all that's going to happen is, you know, wherever Wireshark is scanning the data, it's going to create a PCAP file, and it's going to have all the packets that it collected over a period of time. So that's basically that. The features F1 through F2, we already said there are about 40 of them or less. Those are the features in the TCP and IP headers. So the X matrix is basically um, solved now. We've defined how we want this to be. 
Now the next one is the labels, right? So we want to do the class. So we want to do the class here, right? And so we need to define what are the classes. So this was actually the simplest problem uh, that we need to solve here. Go back. We established that we had five. We established that we had five different types of devices. Right, so we have assistant, miscellaneous, camera, power outlet, mobile. So these are the five things that we want to detect, right? We want to so we have basically a five class problem. All right, so here we are. So this is a five class problem. So we have classes. We have five. Zero, one, two, three, four. All right, which are going to be camera assistant or you know Alexa uh, power I'm just gonna call it power mobile and miscellaneous so that's a five class problem all right so okay so we know these values are gonna be zero one two and so on but how do we get those values so it, you know the, the question we need to answer is is this a supervised or an unsupervised learning uh, problem. All right, so that's the next question we need to answer. All right, so um, we need to define the classes, right? So we need to define the classes for this problem. Is this a supervised or unsupervised? So the question is if it's supervised or unsupervised. If it's unsupervised, then we're ready. We have our data because we don't have any labels, right? But the quite, but usually uh, supervised learning problems are better, right? So whenever we have labels, that's always you know we have more structure. It's just more information, so it's worth uh, thinking about supervised first and see if we actually have it. So as it turns out. Um, if you have your network, you know, you can identify usually how do you know how do we identify devices in the network? We usually identify the identify devices in a network by you know uh, the, the the protocols of identity in uh, in system administration, right? So we know that you know you know identity is very important. So the things that we can use for this are things like the MAC address, the MAC address, oops, or the source IP of the device that's sent. So whenever we send a packet, right, and we look at the IP header, it always has a source IP and a destination IP. All right, so we always have a source IP and a destination IP. So in this case, to simplify things, we're just going to use source IP. So we are going to see that the, the, all the devices in our data that we collected, actually, you know, if they were mobile or they, if they were IoT devices, they basically belong to a certain set of IP addresses that was kind of like static statically assigned. So that basically means, or it was a, a subnet that was assigned just for IoT devices. So it turns out that just by looking at the packet, and in the packet, just by looking at the source IP, we can determine, you know, what type of a device this is. All right? And so that, now, uh, that this particular issue here relates to the lab. All right? So in the lab, uh, you know, if you're a, 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 an instructor using these materials, or if you're a student using them, you can read through the, 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 the Word document. You can also modify it as, as you would like. But basically, the, the data that we are providing uh, has the source IP for every packet. And so we will provide a list of the IP addresses that belong to assistants, the IP addresses that belong to cameras, the IP addresses that belong to miscellaneous, mobile, and outlets and so on, and then based on that, you will be able to determine if those packets came from a camera or whatever. And so now that we have that, we know that 
we can get the data from our Wireshark, then we can read the PCAP files. <coughs> Whenever we grab a packet, which basically means we grab this, right, that's one sample, we extract the features from the, from the IP and the TCP header, and then also from the source IP, we just need to see what, you know, we'll have a list of the IPs that belong to each class, and then we will say, oh, this is IP, you know, 182.168.1.65. Oh, that's a camera, it's zero. Then I grab another one, 192.168.1.40, uh, or 48. Okay, so that one, oh, that's a outlet, that's a power outlet, so class is two, and so on. So this is the process that you will have to do. But in the code, you will have to do this yourself because, you know, the, day, the classes are not labeled directly. They are just tied to the IP address. Okay? So now we've defined everything in our data set. So we can summarize here. This is the key component, right? Samples are packets. Sample 1, sample 2. The features are the values in the, we have about 40 of them in the TCP and IP, so we can say TCP IP headers. That's where that comes from. This is each packet. Each packet is a sample. And, and this is the X. And then the Y is going to be the labels. It's gonna be the labels. And that's going to be, you know, based on source IP. So source IP in this list, so if IP in camera IPs dot dot, then assign, you know, class equal zero. And so this is going to be zero. All right, so that's basically uh, our approach. Okay, and so now I've given you kind of the, the theory of this. Now I'm just going to describe the lab, and then we are going to look at, you know, how to implement this in our code. So the objective now of the lab is to extract features. So remember, uh, it's, that's the hardest part that we're going to do here. So we have the data. We've defined it. Great. In the, we'll need to do some cleaning of the codes. So we're going to, you know, clean the code. So this, you know, we have to write that part. And then we need to do this, make sure that we have a file that is in the vector space model. So we need to do that. We're going to do this with t -shark and Python. And then once we have that, we're going to do machine learning and evaluate and see how it performs. And so the great thing about this, this part here, we're just going to make it as easy as possible by just doing Weka, but that way we can actually complete the entire machine learning pipeline. Remember, the focus of this lab is this, feature extraction. So that's really what we want to concentrate on, okay? So uh, basically this lab is made to extract features from PCAP files. So the lab now in summary, you know, I'm going to write it here. So the goal is to extract, extract features from PCAP files. All right, so we want to extract features from PCAP files and then represent the data in the vector space model. We want to look at the possible features, so we want to identify, identify the features, right? We want to identify the features. So you will have to write some Python script, so you need to write, write a Python Script. So you'll need to write a Python script. All right. Um, you will need a list. Right? We will have a list of IPs per IoT.
device for the classes. Right, so we will have that. Now you can read all of this is in the document, right? So all of this is in the lab. I'm just kind of summarizing it here. In the lab, we will extract 18 features. Now there's going to be a little table in the Word document that provides the features that you will need to extract, okay? From, from the document. The lab environment will basically be, so the lab environment The lab environment will basically be to use uh, Python, T Shark, and Weka. Right, and any any libraries that are uh, required for this. Okay. Now you will need to use the PCAP files that we have provided, all right? So we've provided some PCAP files. So PCAP files, you can download those. The information on how to download them is in the lab, in the lab handout, okay? And then we will provide some starter code. We will provide some starter code that you can reference, you know, which includes how to start writing but it's not complete so it includes the libraries and some help you know some functions and some instructions but you will have to kind of craft the code yourself so starter code is included and the starter code does provide some explanations on how to do to do things and then finally once you're done you you know you can create you know your lab reports provide screenshots whenever you do this kind of thing you should always provide, you know, a lab, you know, for your own record even, create a report of the code, what you did, the steps that you did, so you can recreate it, some screenshots, and an evaluation of the performance. So evaluate, evaluate performance. Now, even though the focus of this is the feature extraction, you can use Weka for machine learning. All right for ML and then I would just say select three algorithms three algorithms three algorithms and just you know evaluate the data select three algorithms and evaluate evaluate if you don't remember how to use Weka I suggest that you go uh, to the Weka video in this series of uh, videos, lectures, right, and labs, and uh, just see, you know, I provided a, an instruction on how to use the Weka program. All right, so what you will do basically in the feature extraction, feature extraction, so this is the logic, right? So you've received one really big one really big dot pcap file so you have received a very big dot pcap file and it's got a lot of entries in it a lot of entries of packets basically so these are packets let me just say this is packet one packet two and the data is all mixed up so for instance this might be a camera this might be a camera this could be a server that you don't need then you have you know, uh, a host that you don't need. Then you have um, an Alexa that you do want, and so on, right? So you have all the data is mixed in like that. So what you will have to do is you will have to write a script first that goes through this PCAP file, ignores things like server and host, and extracts cameras and Alexas. Now remember that you have a list of IPs. You have a list of IPs. Right? And you will use that list of IPs to select what you need. Once you, have, once you use that list of IPs, you're going to create five individual files, for instance. You know, smaller files. Each one just containing the data for the particular class. So it'll be camera, 
assistant, power, miscellaneous, and mobile. Right? You'll create, and the reason for doing this is that this is the name. So it'll be like camera.pcap. So this is a convenient thing to do because you do camera.pcap and then power.pcap and so on. So really the name of the file is your label. So everything in here is a camera. Everything in here is a power. And so this is just, you know, one way I recommend to write the code which helps you to know what every packet is. So then each row here is a packet, you know, P1, P2. And then once you have these five, you can then write another script that will take each file, take the label, and extract the features from here and here uh, so that you can then convert this to the vector space model. Right? So that will be the last part, taking these files here, right? these files here, and converting them to the vector space model. Once you have that, you're going to end up with one file. Right? So once, you know, let's say these are the five from before. Right? Those were the five from before. And now these five, with their labels, are going to be one single vector space model. So vector right, space model, where you take the name. So like this is camera.pcap, and then here's packet one, packet two. So now here you're going to have you know, class. It's going to be camera. And then this is going to be P1, you know, the information, P1 features. All right, so you've done that one. Then you take the next one again from camera. Camera, so you took that. And then you take P2 features. And you're going to keep doing that for all five. So you've got to do that for this, this, and that. And then finally, you're going to end up with your vector space, you know, data, right? And then once we have this, we are ready to do machine learning because that will be in the format. So this is in the format of the vector space model. So this is vector space. And then now we can do machine learning, all right? And that's basically it. All right, so uh, now we will proceed. So now we proceed to the code. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to our uh, Linux environment and we are going to basically write the code.